Hello everyone, my name is Shane Johnson. I'm the founder of Booyah Veteran Bus Project. I wanted to take a few moments today to kind of talk about our project and what it entails. This project kind of came to me, you know, I, I want to say it's been a really, really long time, but it, it, it hasn't. It's been a matter of less than a year. Um, I own a mortgage company, Booyah Mortgage, and this company was built solely around veterans. I wanted to produce and create something that had a foundation that meant a lot more than just the transaction itself. I wanted to focus on doing what's right. To be honest with you, I wanted a mission, a movement to change the way the industry treats the veteran community. I never thought it would lead me to where I am today. When this project came to me, it came to me just from a real estate agent that I was working with that happened to be president uh, auxiliary at Post 392 in Panama City. We were sitting around and we were having some lunch together and she told me this story. She said, you know, I've got this gentleman that I know that our post recently gave a wheelchair to and he lost his leg due to gangrene and I thought, wow, that sounds horrible. And as we were having the conversation, she was telling me that the, the reason why he ran into it is because of lack of ability to get to a shuttle bus that takes him another two hours to go from Panama City to Pensacola VA. And I kind of had to take a step back when I thought about that and I said, wow, that just blows my mind, right? He lost his leg due to the fact that he didn't have the correct transportation. So I had to dig into this story more. So as she kind of told me a little bit more about it, she was saying that he had to walk anywhere between 8 and 15 miles a day to get to a shuttle bus that takes another two hours to get them to the Pensacola VA. And I thought to myself, geez, if I had to walk 8 to 10 miles now, I'd probably pass out. You know, much less being in my 60s, much less having a hurt leg, much less being a Vietnam veteran, and at least it earned some right to be able to have the ability to get to and from a hospital without having to go through that much pain. And then I thought to myself, wow, what happens if you miss the appointment? I know that the VA can take anywhere between three and six months to get another appointment. She was telling me that they were sleeping on park benches. They'd go a couple miles as much as they could. They'd sleep on the park benches. And then from there, they'd make it to the bus. And then the bus, if they missed it, then they'd have to reschedule their appointment. And they didn't have any transportation. And I just, with all the things that are out there now between you know Uber and Lyft and cab companies, it just blew my mind. Well, I said, was well, anybody doing anything about it, you know? Now you gotta, you gotta remember, this is you know, Panama City, Florida. This is where I built my mortgage company. I mean, you know, there's two large military bases there. They've given me so much, the real estate agents, the people, the community's just been awesome. And I don't even live there, you know? I live in, in Lake Mary, Florida, outside of Orlando. And I, I just kind of said, well, is there anybody really helping? What are, what are we doing to fix it? And she told me about um, Miss Ellen Gilbert. You know, she's 80 years young, just recently turned 80 years young. And she put over 300,000 miles on her Mazda truck picking these vets up. And obviously she can't pick them all up and little Mazda trucks she couldn't put them all in there. But she did the best that she could and put over 300,000 miles. Now she's on a fixed income. She's 80 years young. I had the opportunity to interview her. And I said, Miss Ellen, why do you do this? She said, sweetie, why would I not? They're veterans. My husband was a veteran. My kids are veterans. I tried to join, but I was too small and they wouldn't let me in. So basically I said, the heck with them, I'm gonna help veterans anyway, they can't stop me from that. You know, so just think about the personality of that individual. Didn't ask anybody, you know, just went and did it. Just like a veteran would, right? You know, I went back to my office after we had that lunch and she told me that story. And, you know, when I built my mortgage company, I, I built it with a why. You know, I think that in anything that you do, you have to have a why. Otherwise, you only do it for the money. And you know, I always say you'll always be broke if you focus on money. But you know that you're really truly successful when you have the things that money can't buy. And that's helping people and doing things for people. And no matter in what capacity you do it, and it always makes you feel good, right? I mean, it really does. I mean, if you help somebody across the street, if you give somebody a couple bucks, even if you didn't have it, you walk away. And even though you lost money per se, you gain so much more from that. So when I built my mortgage company, I said, I really want to have a mission statement behind it because I want my people to understand that when they're working with the veteran community, that they're not working for them as a closed transaction or a dollar amount or a promotion or anything of that nature, that they're doing it for 100% complete sincerity. So I had to build that mission statement. And that mission statement says a veteran, whether active duty, retired or discharged, is someone who at one point in his or her life 
wrote a blank check made payable to the United States of America for an amount up to and including his or her life. And that is honor. And there are way too many people in this country today who no longer understand that fact. And our mission is to give back to those who wrote that blank check. So when I sat down and developed that mission statement, I said, and no matter what we do, that's what it'll be. Then I realized I don't own a mortgage company anymore. I realized that when I built Booyah Veteran Bus Project that it's not a nonprofit. It's a movement. It's a mission. It's a way to truly change things, not just profit from it. So when I looked at that why, and I had that conversation with Ms. Pam Mathis, and she explained to me about what Ms. Ellen Gilbert gave, I went back to my office and I said, I've got to do something about this. I am a business leader in the community. I'm a veteran. What can I do to help? What can I do to change that? So I realized when I created the mission statement that it 100% fully focused on the fact that now it's a mission. It's a movement. It's truly a way to change the way things are done for the veterans. Now I say that my company is a nonprofit disguised as a mortgage company. Because where are we truly getting back from? It's from doing the right thing. So I went back to my office and I said, okay, being a Marine, I've got to put together an action plan. I've got to come up with something. I, you know, I don't consider myself the smartest person in the room, um, but I know that I can PT, you know? And I said, I've got to come up with something. And I reached out to a couple of good Marine Corps friends of mine because I'm gonna tell you something, when you serve in the military with brothers and sisters, doesn't matter in what capacity, where, and the time difference, you can always count on them. So I reached out to them and said, listen, I want to raise awareness somehow. Let's do a hike. You know, in the Marine Corps, we call it a hump. Just didn't seem as appropriate, you know? So we said, we'll, we'll do a ruck, we'll do a hike. So they said, okay, great, let's put it together. We'll do it, you know? Three weeks, 22 miles a day. Let's go from Orlando, Florida, all the way up to Panama City. Then let's take and get to a point where everybody knows about it, right? And look, I'm not talking about the normal nonprofit. I'm not talking about the normal organization that says we're gonna try to do something and we do it in this capacity. I'm talking about a nationwide movement to where we get everybody involved. It's truly organized with a 100% pure mission statement behind it. So I said, why don't we start there? And of course they jumped all over it, right? So we'll go for it. We'll pack up and, and do our, our hike, which takes place on October 22nd, you know, 2016. The biggest thing that I have to say is that I never thought that the project would be where it is today. I never thought any of it would be where it is today. I just wanted to help. That's all I wanted to do. This project now has opened up so many different doors for me. And what I mean by that is friends that I never knew I had, family that I never really knew I had. It's helped me develop and, and be more. It's helped my daughter understand more about giving. It's helped my family understand more about giving and truly living what we say that we're doing. You know, I hear a comment around a lot that says we want to make America great again. I think America's already great. I think it happens each and every time we put together a project like that. We see the true American spirit. You know where it all starts? It starts in our home. It starts with our family. It starts with them understanding and appreciating the veteran community and what they've sacrificed and what they've done. Because that's what America's all about, right? It's the sacrifices that people have made. They sacrifice their own free will so that we can have our own. I never knew that this project would involve, you know, evolve to that. That's not what I, at all what I thought it was going to be. I had no idea that it was going to get to that point. But what I've learned so much is that we live in the greatest country in the world. And we've sacrificed so much for it. We have to understand that it's our due diligence to help the ones and work for the ones that have done so much for us. Even if we have served, whether it be selfish or selfless, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they still deserve to be treated right. Because I'm going to tell you, if stuff goes bad, I want them on my back, you know, helping me out, covering my sixes, we would say. I start this hike. We start to put it together. Miss Ellen tells me the story about these veterans that are walking 8 to 15 miles a day. We said, great, we'll throw some packs on our back. We'll raise awareness. We'll get everybody involved. 
And then we'll create, we'll take transit buses and create them to shower, bathroom, and laundry facilities. Now think about that concept for a second. It just blows your mind when you really think about it. I'm going to create showers and bathrooms with a transit bus. And I, I didn't create this idea. I actually stole it from you know another nonprofit in San Francisco that was kind of doing the same thing, but they weren't doing it for veterans specifically. And I said, man, that would be just a great idea. So I started going to everyone and I said, what if I could show you a way? What if I could create a project where I could decrease homelessness, decrease the amount of veterans that commit suicide, and increase the amount of veterans that become CEOs of S&P 500 companies? Would that be something you'd jump on board with? Of course you would. The success rate of an S&P 500 company ran by a veteran is 25% greater than one ran not by a veteran. The tolerance for fraud is zero. Yet in the 1980s, over 60% of the CEOs of an S&P 500 were veterans. Now it's less than 8%. So the start of Vietnam was almost 60 years ago. And since then, we've created the iPhone, the internet, just about any and everything you want is at your fingertips. Yet our VA system is still not correct. We're still letting our veterans down. There are still veterans out there today committing suicide all because they can't get into a hospital. Our government can try to do it. But rather than get on a political rant and point fingers of who's right or who's wrong, let me tell you who's wrong. We as the veterans, we've let each other down. We've gotten out into the community and we've gotten segregated and we've allowed the civilian population to infiltrate our minds to say that we have this sense of independence. That's not who we are. We don't do anything alone when it comes to the military. Yet when we get out, we do really create this sense of independence and we believe that Someone owes us something because we served our four, 10, 15, or 20 years. I maybe stood in a different room, but when I took my oath at 18 years old, I was 17 when I signed up. I wasn't even, I had to have my parents sign before. When I took my oath, my oath was to stay with me for the rest of my life. It doesn't matter now that I'm no longer a Marine per se. I'm always a Marine. I always help, I'm always there. I always do whatever I can in any capacity to help change lives, whether it be young or old or anything that I can give. But when we get out, we change all of that. And we have these different posts and these legions and AMVETs and all of these different organizations and it doesn't become unified. Then we create these wonderful nonprofits and all of these different things and then again, they're not unified. Our objective is the same. Look, we came from an organization that is the largest dominating corporation in the world, the United States military. It is broken up into different branches, structured, and everybody has their role and everybody plays their role to the T. If we could just bottle that up and create that exact same thing in the civilian sector, imagine what we could do and then give it a why. And that's what I feel the Booyah Veteran Bus Project is going to do. Look, you need to understand, the first phase is to get everyone aware. And being aware is not just seeing it, it's being involved. The second phase is, it's a band-aid, it truly is. But we have to start somewhere. We have to give them a sense of dignity. Look, I, being out in the field and coming back, <laughs> having a shower, cleaning up and feeling good about yourself, you know, how you look, how you feel, how you present yourself in your day-to-day -day is extremely important. You know, being a Marine, we look good, we feel good. And that's how we present ourselves. So the shower bus is just giving them a sense of dignity, getting out there and connecting with them when normally you wouldn't have that ability to connect with them. But let me ask you something. Everybody's got a plan for the homeless vet. But does anybody have a plan for the vet that gets out? What do I do? Where do I go? I'm still 18. You understand? I'm still 18. I haven't yet learned to be a civilian. I don't know what I want out of life because I've been told for the last four years or 20 years what I'm going to do. And I've been really, really good at it. What we're not doing is fixing it at the source. We're not taking a step back and looking and saying, why don't we grab them just before they get ready to get out? They're obviously coachable. They obviously have the foundation to be great. I mean, they're at the, what, less than top 1%? And they're the best of that? So they have the core foundation of all the things to be wonderful and great. 
But again, they've got to be coached in the right direction. The third phase of the project is to put them through a 13-week program, just like boot camp, to help them evolve and adapt to the civilian sector to take all the principles that they have and change that language so that they can understand how they can apply that to the civilian world. What if I could show you a way where I could put them into a 13-week program to teach them to be six-figure a year income producing military civilians? Wouldn't that be something that'd be great? Pillars of your community, entrepreneurs, business leaders, they have the core foundation and the integrity to do it. But instead, what do we do? We push them into jobs like being at Starbucks, being a barista, or a greeter at Walmart. I'm not saying that those jobs are bad. But you know what? You spend time in 3rd Battalion, 4th Marines. You spend time running a perfect PFT. You spend time jumping out of a helicopter. Shoot, I'm not even close to some of the guys out there that are SEALs, Force Recon, Rangers, Snipers. You mean to tell me that they don't have the foundation to be something great? Equate that to a civilian resume. CEO of Fortune 500 company all day long. Instead, they're out homeless. If I could take them and put them into an environment with 13 weeks where I could help them develop a system to where they could go back to their community and be successful in all ways, not just monetary, that'd be something each and every one of you'd be on board with. So the third phase of that project is an entire community. It's a 500 acre community. A community that will have everything from helping with PTSD to helping with amputees to helping them be in an environment. Look, isolation kicks in, then the thinking starts to kick in. And when the thinking starts to kick in, all the demons come up and get you. But when you're around your brotherhood, when you're around your family and you have that support system, that doesn't happen. We've got to band together. We've got to join together and create a community where we can be there for one another because that's really where it lies. We find it in these small relationships that we find throughout the civilian world that we bump into each other and it's that instant bond. What if we could put that into a confined environment where we're always there, that family's always there, that hotline is always there? Do you think I would decrease the amount of veterans that commit suicide? You're damn right I would. Do you think we can create more successful veterans? Hell yeah, we could. I just want to take what took me 15 years banging my head against the wall and condense it into 13 weeks and grab these gals and guys and put them in this environment to help them get past that. Then I want to create a mentorship program that makes them give 10% of their income back to the project and they have to be a mentor for all the new recruits that come in. And we want to take that national. And I need any and everyone's help to do that. So I want to create a series I want to create a movie. I want to create any and everything I can to raise as much awareness as possible. Because there's a ton of stuff on TV out there that has no bearing on teaching our small children or what it's like to be a role model. An athlete is not a role model. A Navy SEAL is a role model. A Ranger is a role model. A veteran is a role model. Because that teaches the basic foundation to overcome any possible fear you have to go into something that most people will only dream to accomplish. To me, just like John Wayne says, being scared to death and getting on the horse and riding anyways. That's a role model I want for my children. And if we can bottle that up and put it into a film or put it into a series where we can put something good and teach children about good role models and a good foundation. And now then we can start on that 60 year process to make it great again. And that's what I'm looking from each and every one of you. Let's make America great again.